Hello, everybody, and welcome to our next episode on The Female Fist. I'm really excited about this episode. I have such an amazing guest with us today. She is a two-time world champion, and she is the NABA featherweight champion. Is that right? NABF, W -A -F, sorry, NABF world champion. Oh, my classes, there's a couple different, um, there's a couple different. I have four belts total, two-time world champion, WBC, IFBA, and uh, the NABF and the NABA were uh, the regional titles. Oh my God. See, th thank you so much for clarifying that. I don't want to butcher it. So please, everybody, welcome the real million dollar baby. Okay, the real million dollar baby, Maureen Shea. Thank you so much for coming on to the show with me. I'm really excited to get into a conversation with you. Thank you. No, it's such a pleasure. So obviously for our audience, anybody who doesn't and should know about you, she was in, well, you were the sparring partner for Hilary Swank in the movie, The Million Dollar Baby, hence why you have that nickname. Yep. Yeah. So I worked with Hillary. I was, um, it was 2003 that she came to Gleason's gym where I had been training and uh, she was put with Hector Roca, who was my boxing coach at the time. And um, I, it was funny. I remember meeting her in the office. Like I worked in the office to pay my dues to Bruce Silverglade, who owns Gleason's. And she walked in and then Bruce introduced me to her and said, oh, you and Maureen may be working together. And then lo and behold, uh, you know, the following week, she started working with Hector Roca and then Hector paired me with her. Um, I mean, she, she, she got to train with different people, but we were primary, I was her primary sparring partner. I was getting ready for the golden gloves and she was getting ready just to learn boxing and obviously for million dollar baby. So we trained, we sparred three times a week. Hector was really big into sparring. And so I sparred everybody. Like he would just throw me in the ring with whoever he felt, whether it was guys, girls, you know, yeah. whoever he felt during that day. Um, but for me, like there was specific work because a lot of people are like, oh, did you hit her? Did you? And I'm like, no, because he sent me in there to work on something specific. So mostly defense and then countering. But the thing with me, and, and you would understand this too, is I always had control in there. And I know a lot of people, men and women, don't really know how to control their punches. And so I always went in there. I never went 100% ever. Even now, I don't go 100% unless I say I need to spank somebody. If I need to <laughs> them, I'm like, okay, but back then I didn't even know I was learning, you know? And so I just went, I just went like as much as like just trying to get the technique right, which is why I'm such a technical boxer today. Um, so learning that work and then being paired with her, she was protected, you know, so I wouldn't hurt her. And even if she went hundred percent on me, it wasn't going to hurt because she didn't have the technique, you know? So, um, but she was, she developed it and she got better. And it was just such a pleasure to work with her because she's just a real person and very genuine and authentic. And I, I learned a lot from her as well. Yeah, she's, uh, she's one of my favorite actresses. I think she does phenomenal work. And I think that's amazing that you had the opportunity to work with her in the ring. And I think that's, um, that's an interesting point that you made that you know how to control yourself in the ring. And I think every combat athlete out there can relate to having one session with somebody, you know, maybe in their beginning stages, maybe when they were first starting out of boxing, there's always been somebody that's gotten in there with the ring and they don't know how to control themselves. And they've been hit where it wasn't necessary. And I think it's so important that people to, when you reach a certain level, when you're going for provincial championships or for state championships or national championships or international, when you're at a certain level, there's a respect that you're supposed to have in the ring. And I think that a lot of people sometimes forget that. And when oh, yeah. they have these people that are trying to learn the sport, trying to understand ring, you know, respect mm -hmm. and when they get these horrible experiences and it kind of creates this bad name around boxing where like, oh, these people just go in there, they throw you in there and then you just get beat up. Well, it's that like, kind of happened to me. <laughs> so, that kind of happened to me. Yeah, please I, tell me. Yeah, I, th I think that every, I, but I look at it like it was like a test for me if I really wanted to do this, if you really want to come back because you had to be able to kind of like, you know, and I think it's important for every female to go through or any fighter to kind of go through that test and then realize, okay, what do I need? What do, what do I have? What don't I have? What do I need? And how do I get it? You right. know, so that happened to me when I first started. And I remember, uh, and it, I got humbled real quick. Um, I was only boxing a couple, maybe like six months. And I had only sparred with the guys who didn't beat me up. The guys were like playing pity pat with me. Right. And my coach at the time, Willie, uh, Willie Soto said, okay, they brought a girl in for me to spar. And I'm looking at this girl and I'm like, oh, she's small. Like she was smaller than me. And so I got in the ring. I'm like, oh, she's, I totally judged the book by its cover. And she caught me with a left hook. And I thought I broke my jaw. And I was like, I stopped the sparring, you know? And I remember 
I was so embarrassed. And then I went home and I cried. And then I came back to the gym the next day and I just kept going. So that was my test. And I realized, don't judge a book by its cover. And then I found out she was a Golden Glove champion. I hadn't even fought yet. And, and that made sense. Like it didn't matter how big or small she was. She, it mattered her experience, you know, and that I didn't have. So she knew exactly what was coming at her. I had no idea. And I don't think she threw the punch to hurt me. She threw the punch and landed the punch because I was, you know, all I knew was one, two, three, slip, slip. That's all I knew. You right. know, so she's going to catch me, but um, I don't remember her name, but um, that was probably the best lesson I ever learned. And it really- I'm sure she remembers your name though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. But it was, um, it was, it was interesting. So it was it definitely, like I said, the test, you know, but after that, there were times where I was put in there with guys. I had other coaches that didn't have the experience and didn't understand. I got put in there with some guys that, that beat me up and I thought I had to fight. And that's where I felt like I was never good enough or I always had to fight, you know? But when I got in there with somebody that worked with me, I never wanted, I guess I never wanted to put somebody else through that. Right. You know? And with the guys, I'm like, I didn't think I was hitting them hard. They're guys, you know? But some of them were just, you know, they didn't have the control. They were like 17, 18 yeah. years old. I mean, I was 18 years old too, but I'm a woman. Like, I'm okay to say, I'm not as strong as these guys. Yeah. Like, it's not natural. We're not, we're not created that way. You know, endurance wise, we can out beat them with that. But when it comes to power and, and, and strength, it's very different. And I always have that conversation with everybody too, because people always say to me, would you ever fight a guy? It's like, okay, because now in this new era, people are, you know, you see now like in UFC, they're putting men in there with women and some of these shows. And I just think it's so, you know, I don't want to, you know, bring up this controversial topic, but it's like- Your opinion, I agree. And, you know, I think that because pound for pound, a guy my size, he's still a man. And he's still like, his bone density is different than mine. I've got like flow in estrogen. He's got flow in testosterone. Like, it's just different. I don't want to get hit with that. It's not fair. And See, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say that like, oh, uh, a guy could just beat me up, you know, as a fighter, just a fighter, uh, doesn't matter if you're man or woman, you're never going to let somebody just beat you up. You're going to always fight, you know, as much as you can, but I don't want to go in there and fight a guy. I don't want to do that. And I don't think that's like, you know, no. It's not, it was, and, and I think I, I agree with you. And I think there's a couple of reasons why that's coming to, to now why people are, well, I mean, first of all, because of the transgender, which I think is unfair um, in all sports, not just combat sports. Mm-hmm. Um, also, because I think they were people, I, I feel like the, the public wasn't informed as far as the understanding that women's boxing is the same as men's boxing. The only difference is in the professionals, we fight four, we fight two minute rounds and they fight three minute rounds. So right away, they're like, oh, well, women don't fight as much. Why? Because we have a higher rate of concussions, a higher percentage rate to get concussions. That's one reason. Second, I was always asked by um, different uh, media about what I thought about a lot of women wanting to fight three minute rounds. And I, I, I mean, look at what happened with Marlene and, and, Cien- and um, Sinisa when yeah. they fought three minute rounds. Marlene's gash, I mean, that may have been avoided. You know, I don't, I think women's boxing for me, I like it. It's like women's tennis. I'm like, why are you going to keep it different? It's a different type of sport. It's a same sport, but it's a different style. Women have a different finesse, a different, it's like with anything, women are going to do things differently than the men. It's not so much who's better, but I would say you never see a boring women's fight because they fight two minutes. There's no time with men. I've seen plenty of boring men's fights and I'm not putting the men down because they're going to agree with me. It's not that we can't do it. It's that why it's got to stop being a competition. You know, and I felt like that, but then like, oh, the pay and, and I'm like, oh, it's, I don't feel that we're not getting paid because we fight two minute rounds. I feel like we're not getting paid because we're not being marketed correctly and yes. we're not being given platforms. I mean, it's like, I mean, I had a conversation with, with one of my, one of uh, uh, actually a world champion male fighter that I love to death. You know, he's a great guy, but I said it to him. I was like, he's like, oh, well, once you guys fight three minute rounds, you got, I'm like, that's such BS. I'm like, if we get the, I mean, Dana White, I just had this conversation with Phil, my, my strength coach. Dana White did it right. He didn't dilute the market. He took the 135 pounders, built those women, Ronda Rousey, took the 115 pounders, built those women, Joanna Jerzejczyk, Tisha yeah. Torres, all those girls. And then he brought in the 125 after, um, I know so much about MMA because I'm a, I'm a fan, but then he took, you know, Amanda Nunes, yeah, Amanda Nunes versus Valentina Shevchenko, and then created the 125, which Valentina Shevchenko is fighting 125. She's dominating. Could she fight Amanda Nunes again? Amanda Nunes is significantly bigger than Valentina and Valentina went the distance twice with Amanda. 
And even even Dana said it the other night. He said, "I don't see because because you know Valentina beat um um what's her name um uh, uh, uh Jessica yeah. yeah yeah." So you know, it was like Valentina. I'm a fan of Valentina's. Me too. You know? And I was a fan of Joanna's and Joanna actually, she, and I was a fan of Tisha's and Tisha and I sparred and Joanna trained with, with Phil. I got to meet her and, and speak to her. And, you know, it's, it's so, um, even Amanda, you know, at, at ATT when I was going over there and stuff. And, you know, it's so cool to get to know these women, even Valerie Letourneau, people didn't know, but Valerie Letourneau who ended up fighting um, Joanna Jerzejczyk at 115, which that is not Valerie's weight class. No. Valerie's like a 135 pounder, yeah. you know, 125 is cutting it close, but Valerie and I used to train at Gleason's back in the early 2000s when she went before the UFC. You know, a lot of these women have been around for a long time, and Valerie is one of the toughest girls that I know, you know, overall. And her fight with Joanna Jacek was great. She was, but people don't realize like she's not a 115 pounder. Yeah. You know, that's a tough, like to cut all that weight. Oh, but she's the bigger girl. I'm like, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Oh, like when you go, like that's where most knockouts come from is the dehydration alone. And the injuries and the death, yeah. you know, and, and, and I'm glad you said that because that's a big thing with MMA in comparison to boxing. Yeah. You know, I see these girls in boxing jump in weight classes. Like I jumped weight classes because I kind of had to, there was a number of reasons. I did it because there wasn't enough, enough fish in the pond for me. And I was stopping a lot of the girls at the, at the, the lower weight classes. So we went up. I also had an eating disorder and I suffered from depression. So I was on antidepressants. I was it was, it was, it was tough. My eating disorder was, I was a compulsive eater and I was struggling with depression and I, Oh, I have a picture. I can send it to you. I was 180 pounds uh, oh multiple God. times in my life, not, not because I wasn't disciplined, but because I, you know, I, I've been in therapy since I was, since I was like seven, but I've had an array of issues. You know, I just didn't make them public because, you know, I was going through them. And when you're going through something, it's, it's hard to, to, to come out and say like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm messed up. And plus at the time I didn't, if you could see me. Oh my God. That looks like two different people. Oh yeah. And it wasn't once it was multiple times in my life. Wow. Yeah. Like the, I, if somebody showed me that and said, that's Maureen, I would never have thought it's like, no, it's not. It's just, I, I see Maureen like, wow. And These I have three different life transformations for you. Huge, huge. And boxing has been a big part of that, you know, and that's the thing, like people didn't know those things about me. Like I got offered matchroom boxing called me and offered me the 130 pound to fight for the 130 pound world title against their champion in my backyard here in, in Florida. I'm in Florida now at the hard rock. And I'm like, what I'm ranked number. I was ranked number one by the WBA at 118. I'd been ranked at 122. I hadn't fought at 130 in years. I'm like, why am I going to go up? See, this is the problem what's happening now. It's like, I'm not going to sell myself out. The fights that I fight now at 29 and two with 13 knockouts and a two-time world champion, they need to make sense. They need to financially make sense and they need to make sense for me in my ranking. I'm not going to go and fight. I just, and I told my manager that I'm just not going to, why do you think I haven't fought this year? I'll tell you why, because I was supposed to fight for the world title in May, WBA world title, and then COVID hit. So then yep. my fight got pushed. And then the ranking stuff started and we had, we were going back and forth the WBA and then they just had, I was ranked number one. And then they just had um, Ebony Bridges fight uh, Shannon Courtney for the title that was rightfully mine. And those girls were ranked seven and eight because match room, you know, Eddie Hearn, he, you know, he buys the belts and those are his girls. So he's not going to put them in there with me. The girls are like collectively, I think they have 15 fights together. I have 33 fights. He's not going to put them in there with me because I'm a threat and I'm 40 years old. So what's your, what's your reward? What's your, I'm not stupid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, get yeah. it. I did a couple interviews, but what they don't realize is women literally get better with age. Look at Alicia, Ashley. Alicia, Ashley, not only was she one of my, I sparred with her when she was getting ready for her fights when I first started boxing, but she's been such an inspiration for me. And she's watched me reinvent myself multiple times. And we still talk. I mean, she's now in, in, in China doing uh, doing uh, boxing out there and she's doing great, but she's been such an inspiration for me because she was like in her late forties and she was in the Guinness Book of World Records. I think she was like 48 and she beat out Bernard Hopkins and she won the WBC world title. And, you know, and, and, and she was managed by my manager, Luigi Ochese, again, self-promoted. Yes. You know, he did it like with me. And that's why, you know, I stand true to who I am and I'm, I just, you know, it's for me, it's integrity. And it's also just my journey is different than everybody else's. 
you know, um, could I join? I just stay true to myself. And, and, and one of my favorite quotes, I, I was an English major. One of my favorite quotes was Ralph Waldo Emerson said, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. That's been my, if you could probably find interviews from years ago, where I've always stuck by that. And also the easy road is the road to, to um, the easy road is the road to destruction and the hard road is the road to salvation. And I've, and that's biblical. And I've always felt like for me, God is my higher power. And I've always had faith and, you know, my, 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 my spirituality has always been a very, a very important part of who I am. And, and that's been my faith in that God has something bigger for me than I could always imagine for myself. So when I didn't get what my dreams were or what my, I'm like, okay, he's always giving me something that I'm like million dollar baby, never expected that to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, even just all this stuff, training at Lomachenko's gym, never, you know, I mean, I went out and I made it happen, but God opened the doors for me. You know what I'm saying? He gave me that. Hey, I'm like, what are they going to say? No. I mean, how many women have done that? You know what I mean? Have been, I, no women have ever, can ever say they trained at the boxing laboratory. And I used to run with Lomachenko at Arroyo Verde in California. And I just trained the conditioning with multiple Olympians that were from, um, you know, they were all from Russia, from Kazakhstan, from, and they, they're awesome, you know? And, and I'm so blessed that I got to I get those, I create those experiences were there, but it's also, you know, luck is preparation meeting opportunity. Absolutely. absolutely. I got a ton of them. No. And I love that. And I, I'm, oh my God, like everything that you just said is so valuable. It's so, it's so beautiful. Everything that you just said, because not everybody, like not everybody has the opportunity to even hear this kind of wisdom, this kind of knowledge. And as a woman in a sport that's male dominant, and you've been boxing now for how many years? 23, more than half my life. It's a long 26. Yeah. 26. So you, you start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like you were like three. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, but so. like, even that alone, you know, like for me, boxing was such a different world for me 10 years ago. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine like 23 years ago what it looked like. The segregation. Like, I remember Mandy, you know, Mandy Bujol, the Olympian. Of course. Yeah. Cool. I know Mandy. So she's my teammate and she's, awesome. she's, I had her on here and she was telling me about how they used to have like in the amateurs one ring for the men and one ring for the women. And they, they would send all the referees that were like new or they were tired or whatever. They'd send them to the woman's ref, like the woman's ring. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like that would never happen now. So that's but what you know, I mean. Like, you know what? No, it's even, I can tell you even another story when yeah. I went to, so my, I, I fought my second fight nationals. I fought the national champion in my second fight as the amateur because there were no women for me to fight. So I had to pay my way to nationals in Chicago and I got there and I didn't know about making weight. Like I didn't realize the hydration and from the plane ride. So I ended up retaining water. I weighed in at 127. I was fighting at 125. I right. couldn't make it. So my manager, Luigi was my boxing coach at the time. He's like, well, we got two options. Either, either you don't fight or we go up a weight class. We fight at 132. I'm like, well, I'm here. I, I paid. I might as well fight at 132. So I fought and I had the national champion coming down from 138. Naquana Smalls and I fought her and I mean yeah I lost the decision but those were the risks you had to take yeah and the other one is I went to um I think it was uh women's I don't remember it was in Colorado Springs and women weren't allowed to speak because we weren't considered an Olympic sport then we were not allowed to stay on the Olympic premises uh, on the on the premise yeah we weren't allowed to be there so we had to stay in a hotel we had to pay for our, our hotel take our uh, rent a car. I had to cook my food in the hotel where the men were allowed to stay on the Olympic training center, but we fought at the Olympic training center, but we weren't allowed to stay at the Olympic training center because back then. And that's why, because women's boxing was an Olympic sport. And you know, like I'm glad I went through everything that I did, but I also turned pro after having 12 amateur fights because it was tough to get fights. And, you know, I had to pay my way and I was ranked seven nationally out of like, there weren't that many, you know? And again, I learned on the job. I wasn't raised in the sport. And I'm not saying a lot of women did, but I felt my manager, well, Luigi, who was my boxing coach at the time, felt that my style was, was made for the pros. And, you know, so he brought me to the pros. And after Million Dollar Baby, we saw the opportunity with the, with, with the media and the, the fame that I got and the attention to be able to go pro because promoters put me on because I sold tickets and I was marketable. So again, I, that platform is what gave me that boost. 
You know, I didn't have, I mean, but even look at Christy Martin and Christy's amazing. And Christy Martin got the opportunity because she fought on the Tyson card. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then she got in Sports Illustrated and then all that. Layla Ali, she's Layla Ali. You know what I'm saying? Jackie Frazier is Jackie Frazier. Right. Lucia Riker too did it another way. She she had a phenomenal career herself. And Wolf with that knockout of Vonda Ward. I mean, there's a lot of women that if those women didn't do that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and women like me didn't do that, there wouldn't be opportunities for women like you. And we stayed there. And even like, even today, like people ask me like, how do you still have, like, after all this time, how do you still do it? I'm like, I love it. I do love it. But the thing, you know what I found? It's like, I don't, I used to think I needed to box, not financially, but like, I needed it. Like it was who you were. Yeah. And then I realized I'm like, wow, it's really, it's nicer to not need it and to choose to do it. And I think it's a little bit more powerful to choose to do it. Because it's definitely not easy. And I learned that with my manager, Luigi, you know, explanation, the explanation of school and education being of utmost importance during my career, you know? So like even Million Dollar Baby, I was at, Iona, I was going to Iona College in New York. And so I lost my academic scholarship because I started going part-time because I was boxing and they took that away and I couldn't get an, an, uh, a sports scholarship because boxing wasn't considered a collegiate sport. I couldn't use the gym because boxing wasn't considered a collegiate sport. So I was running in the snow, running outside and eating out of the trunk of my car between classes and eating a yam, asking if I can eat a yam in class because they didn't really understand, you know, what I was doing, you know, because they were like, and again, back then boxing, they're like, you don't look like a fighter. Right. Like women like you now are so it's, it's accepted. You're beautiful. <laughs> women that are feminine and more accepted because of, of the Ronda Rousey movement and things like that. And women could still be feminine and be tough where like when I first started, I got doors closed in my face because I didn't look like a fighter. And first of all, because I was a female. Second of all, because I like I looked feminine. Well, which, you're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the thing. And I'm like, but it was, but that hindered me starting out and it made me mad. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to look like? Like, I don't understand. They know the fight that's inside of me. Like they don't get it. Plus I'm an athlete. I mean, look at these phenomenal athletes like Mia Hamm. She's beautiful and she's a phenomenal athlete. Yeah. I was a big, I was a huge Mia, Mia Hamm fan. I was a huge Kerry Walsh, Misty May trainer, like the volleyball player. They're beautiful and they're athletic and they're, you know, and they're, they're not like hard, hard. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't understood what I needed to look like to be accepted. And that was really hard for me, you know, coming up because it was like, you got to be a certain way. And I was just not that way. Right. And I understand that because like even myself just 10 years ago, just 10. Okay. Well, how old? Uh, no, no, no. Even more like 11 years ago now where I had a boy, you know, I was like 15 and you know, whatever. Yeah. And I had a boy, I was just starting. Actually, I started competing in Olympic style wrestling first because my dad didn't let me do the boxing. Cause he was like, wow. oh, I want to see my daughter get punched in the face. I don't want it. So it's like, okay. So I kind of like forced him to let me cause I just took my own way and I went to wrestling first. But this boy had said to me, um, after like I was winning all these medals and I was so excited and I was talking about with my friends, I'm like, oh, I just won gold, you know, whatever. And then he's like, you know, this is something that boys do. Like, why are you like trying to box? Why are you trying to wrestle? And he's like, this is what boys do. Like there's something wrong with you. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I don't really think that girls should be doing this stuff. And of course, like it never hindered me because I grew up in a gym with my father. My father never made it like in my head. Like it was wrong for me to be there as a girl. I was just a part of it. So like, I'm lucky about that part. But when he said that to me, I was really like, this is how people see it. Like that was like the perspective that I saw right there. And like, like you said, you know, you look at so many other like beautiful female athletes and they don't say boo to it. And I thought like, well, because I still knew about Mandy back then, she wasn't the Olympian back then, but she was still all these national championship or whatever. She was the it girl for Canada. And my dad used to say to me, you should look at a girl like her, like she's doing it. You could do it too. And I think, I wonder if she's ever heard those things too, because she's beautiful. Like, you know, yeah. I thought to myself, why is there a stigma about a good looking girl being in a sport? And people say to me all the time, why would you want to get your fit, your pretty face ruined? That's why do you think I'm going to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I tell them. They look at my face and they're like, wow, you know, you're still for all those fights and I don't sound punchy and things. I'm like, I have really good defense, but I've broken my nose like three times. I mean, I got headbutted and I broke it. it and I'm like, 
I'm like, I'll get a new nose when I'm done. I'm like, everybody else gets new noses. I'm like, they're going to have a reason, you know, like <laughs> I can breathe out of my left nostril, you know, but it's like, but, but I think that's what makes us special because listen, we're less than 1% of the population that can do what we do. And so that's what, and you know, that's why we, this conversation, we're just, we can just go back and forth and you can relate so much because we're, we're both special because we're in this, you know, it's not like we're better than anybody else. We're just different. No, and I'm like, I, you know, no. and anybody that question people that I'm, I'm sure like your dad or anybody that knows me is like, no, that girl can fight. Like they've got over the whole look thing yeah. and they got over even my age because I'm here training down at um, Sweatbox, but I'm sparring with Avril Mathy and a lot of the girls and they all respect me. They're like, no, she could fight. Even the guys, David Estrada is down there. David's known me for years. He's like an old school. He's a veteran. And he's like, no, like if they didn't know me, they were going to know me when I was done sparring. I'm like, I'm, I'm a veteran. And I'm, I, I wear that with, with pride. I just, I'm like, I've been around this game for a long time. And I know anybody who knows me, you know, knows like I've been here, you know, and, and, and I love, and that's why boxing is such a small community too. Like, I love that. I love that about boxing is that yeah. you know, I don't, I don't feel like I have to go places and announce myself. I just, sometimes it's hard when, you know, they don't know like younger girls too, that don't know, or, things like that, where I'm just like, I, I don't even care because I've learned to sit back and observe. And I've learned that like, if they care to know, they'll ask. Yeah, and exactly. You're, asking, you're like, there's knowledge, there's experience. I'm like, yeah. And I'm all about sharing that so that you don't have to go through stuff. Like I, I'm one of probably one of the most accessible female athletes. Like, like you said, you know, you took a, a chance to message me. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> Why wouldn't I do it? What? And even Gianna had asked me about, um, she asked me about uh, having another girl on. So ju um, she's a judoka, she's a judo, she's an Olympian judoka, which is, I mean, if you're interested, I'll even, a a Angelica, you know, she's amazing, you know, and she's trains strength and conditioning and I love her to death, just meeting other female athletes in, and she's Cuban and her dad was in judo and she's, she just went to the Pan Ams. I mean, she came in, I think she came in second. I love Angie, like she's like us. You know what I'm saying? So like we connect so much and I'm like, and I asked her if she'd be on Gianna's podcast and she said, yeah. So I connected them. Um, I think it's important, you know, for women in combat sport. I think there's definitely, I mean, obviously boxing is a little bit different, but I connect with MMA fighters, men yeah. and women. I just feel like male MMA fighters accept females like me or like you and boxers more. Like they don't look at us like we're women because the females in MMA have done so well and so they train fine. together. Oh, what? I hope that's not mine. Was that mine? Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought this was on silent. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I was okay. like, where's that coming from? <laughs> no, yeah. so, so like, I think like with the MMA fighters, like they are more accepting and because they're more educated on their counterparts. There are women MMA fighters where, and they train with them. Like they can roll with a girl. Like Amanda Nunez is rolling, you know what I'm saying? With these guys. I mean, I know one of her sparring partners, you know, and he's like, dude, she's a beast. Like she's yeah. like legit, but they don't go hard. You know what I'm saying? Cause they have so many different arts they have to work on, yeah. but you know, she's technically sound. Like I've sparred with him too, you know, Lamar. And I love Lamar. He's awesome. But he's, you know, he's helped Amanda get ready for a lot of her fights and they know how to work with the women. You yeah. know what I mean? And they respect them where I feel male boxers, because we don't train collectively as a team where, you know, you're never going to have your teammate really hold mitts for you. You know, right. usually your coach, there's a different, there's differences. Yeah. I had this conversation with, with Bo Hightower yesterday. And I said, I just find that I get more of a, of a connection with MMA fighters sometimes than, than male boxers, just because of that. They don't, they're not educated. They don't know because they never yes. either gave themselves the opportunity or even considered, let me train you know, but I'll tell you in my gym, all the guys respect me because they've all seen me spar. They all know. And they learn from me. They were like, no, we learn from you. Absolutely. You know? and I'm glad because I'm like, so what? I'm a girl like, you know, like I can do something you can't do, which is move like that. You can try. Yeah. And it's very hard to have, as you were saying, that team kind of like in the boxing specifically because of those reasons, like even for myself growing up with my, uh, with my dad, of course, 
it's like I was at many times the only girl in the gym and I'm very small. I fight at 118. I'm like five foot three and a half. And you know, I'm, I'm tiny. Right. So these guys, like they're big guys. Some of them are corrections officers. Some of them are police officers. Some of them are like firefighters. Some of them are from the military and they're big guys. How does a big guy like that work with a tiny little thing like me? And most of the time it's just defense, but we'd always have to bring in girls and the community is so small. And I guess also to being in Canada, because it's, even smaller when you get down to like you know what I mean so we have like like I fought the same girl like two girls I fought them both five times each it's like it's very small the community right so sometimes like I remember when we would bring some girls in that were veterans at the time like as opposed to me just starting out and even these girls that were veterans didn't know how to work with me at like they're, they're they didn't know how to decipher like okay I'm here she's still green I need to meet her in the middle because for me, I used to think like, well, this girl is so experienced that I'm just going to go as much as I can because I know she can handle it. And I want to like really test myself, but they would take it as like disrespect at some point. And it's like, oh, yeah. you know, you know, like that. Not, I think that's a personal thing. And I, and I always tell the girls I'm going to spar with, like, I'm going to let you go. You know what I mean? But if I need to like, if I, but I'm going to, I'm going to let you know, you know what I mean? But I, I, I feel like I'm always sent out to work on something. Right. So I go out and I work on something, you know, I'm working on defense. Like I spar this girl, Evelyn, she's an amateur boxer, but she also does MMA and Evelyn's great. Sometimes I feel like she's too tough for her own good, but she's, she's really good. You know what I mean? But sometimes she'll stay right in the pocket with me and I'm just like, okay, but then I'll like, I mean, nothing ever to like hurt her, but like, but she's tough. So right. sometimes it's good that we'll get an exchange. It's a good exchange, but then, you know, but she can handle it. So I would like, if I was to get in there with you, I'd be like, okay, like I fight at 122. You know, I walk around at like right now I'm like 132, but like I would work on something to see where you're at. And then I would provide you a, something and then I'd see, well, okay, what could, okay. Her speed, her, whatever. I'd work on something that would benefit me. Cause then otherwise, what's the point? You know what right. I'm saying? Like you get hit with a good shot. Like Evelyn, one time she walked into my right hand because she was lunging. I'm like, all right, well, that wasn't my fault. You walked into right. that, you know, but she's caught me with some beautiful hooks because I was, I wasn't bringing my jab back, you know, those little things, but I'm like, all right, cool. But yeah, I think that that's just a personal thing too. And not many people know how to work. And I, I, I mean, I get in there with some, like, I have like a couple of female clients that I work with and I get in there with them. I get in there with my nine-year-old female client who caught me with an uppercut because I was showing her a move. I turned and she went, boop. I mean, this little girl is something else. She's on my Instagram, Ray Lynn. And I was just like, she just got me a freaking uppercut. <laughs> you know? Like, I'm not going to crack a nine-year-old. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. It's like, I'm proud because I showed it to her, you know, but it's, you know, it's the same thing. Crack a nine-year-old. But, yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> but even like the sparring, like, I don't know, like even sparring when I'm down at, down at Javier's gym at Sweatbox, when I'm sparring like Avril and stuff. And it's like, we're not competing. This isn't a competition and Avril. So she's, she, we have a great, we have great sparring sessions. Like, you know, we, we worked well together. You know, she learned, she said, she's like, I learned a lot from you and Avril's very tough. And I always said to people, I was like, if anybody talks shit about her because she's a model or, you know, miss swimsuit, I was like that she's tough. She's an athlete. She's always getting better. And she provides good work for me too. You know, like I told her, I'll defend you. I don't care. You know, cause people just get ridiculous. Any girl that's like any girl that's willing to step into that ring in front of people, anybody that's willing to step into that ring. I've seen fighters, like my dad, um, he took this fighter out to uh, this town called Sudbury. It's like three hours away from, three hours north from where I am, where we are. So they threw up all the way there for one fight. And the kid that was supposed to fight our kid, he just couldn't handle the nerves. And he began walking to the ring, turned around and walked right out because he couldn't handle it. And like, you know, of course we, our kid was upset because we drove like three hours just to have yeah. one fight. Yeah. But it's like, you see, like some people cannot handle even just getting to the ring. So anybody that can walk into that ring, touch that person's gloves and go, it's like, it's you don't see that, they're a fighter. And the thing is like, even like, you know, you have your gym fighters where, you know, I, I just don't like, people and they're in the ring and they're like, I'm like, okay, but have you had a fight yet? Yeah. Like okay, you're a gym fighter, like you're in the ring, you're sparring, whatever you're doing, but like, it's a whole different thing when you're in an arena and there's actually a win and a loss on the line and you have people watching you and you're under a lot of pressure. Like, 
that's very different, you know? Um, and again, even me, like even, I mean, I respect everybody. I'm very opinionated. And I always say this to people, I just listen, I, I, I'm very opinionated and I, I own it and I'm entitled to my opinion. I don't care if people agree with me or they don't agree with me. It's just my opinion. And sometimes my opinions change based on information that I collect, but you know, I see some people that go into, I don't agree with the way a lot of people, not a lot, but some people do their training. I'm like, I can see a million things wrong with that, but you do you, you know what I mean? <laughs> do you, I can't, I just can't, like when people ask me for advice, I'm just like, I mean, I'm not going to waste my time. Like I'll tell you things, but then it comes to a point where I'm just like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to waste my time. Right. You know, I'm like, this is pointless. Like now you're, it's just, it's a waste. Like, um, and you know, and that's, that that's a frustrating thing when people come to you because of who you are or I'm like, well, you can do what you want anyway. Although that was, I never really asked anybody for advice. I just did what I wanted and people would always give me their advice and I didn't listen because I just didn't. I would have to see things like, like when I would go to the gym, you know, I would train and the trainers all had something to say, but I always listened to one coach, whoever my yep. coach was. And I was very adamant about it. I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And they'd look at me like, why? I'm like, because he didn't tell me to do that. And they were like, they couldn't believe my loyalty, you know? And then if, if he didn't show me something, I would go home and watch tape and I would see it actually happen. And it actually work where I studied Fernando Vargas. I studied Roy Jones. I studied Bernard Hopkins, um, Arturo Gotti. Like I'm talking Chavez senior. I've watched all their fights and Roberto Duran, Marvin Hagler was my favorite. And I was like, Oh, that looks like a cool move. I want to try that. And then I'd go in the gym and try it. And then my coach would be like, you're doing it wrong. Come here. Let me show you how to do it. Because I knew he may have not wanted to show me, but I had to kind of figure it out for myself, you know, right. and then it made it like, and again, that's another thing you realize about men. You got to make it feel like it was their, it was like, their idea. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, this is what you, he's like, oh, look at what I taught her. I'm like, yeah. oh. <laughs> John Hopkins actually taught me that when he fought, uh, you know, Felix Trinidad, but you kind of fixed it. <laughs> but, you know, I love thing. that. Uh, so see, we have to think two steps ahead because we got to work. We got to know how to work the men too. This is a male dominant sport. We got to know how to work them too. See, I feel like as women, what I, what I've learned is that I had to think like a man in order to understand what they wanted from me because women think differently than men. I train my female, like female athletes that I train. They're just like, Oh my God, I get it. I'm like, well, he's telling you the same thing. I'm just telling you in a different way. Right. You know, and they're like, Oh, so for me, not having those females around to talk to, I was like, all right, I don't know what he means. Cause they'll just throw you in there and say, figure it out. I'm like, I need to understand in order to apply. And I'm very photographic. So if you explain to me, okay, this is the move you need to do. And this is why, and this is how it's supposed to look, then I'll do it. But if you just say, just go in there and throw a left hook. I'm like, well, when, well, why, why how? exactly you have to understand it. But that's the thing. And, and again, so I realized like I get along, I have a lot of, I'm a lot of male friends and they all come to me with their girl issues. And I'm like, because that's not what she's hearing. She's yeah. hearing this. And you're got, I said, try saying it like this and then watch what happens. And then they're like, it's too difficult. I'm like, no, it's not. It's man brain, woman brain. It just is. It's like what we're it two is. different species. Yeah. <laughs> and I really like, accept it, you know? And even like my boyfriend now, it's funny because I've been so male dominate thinking that even with him, sometimes he's just like, like, I'll think like a man, he'll just laugh, you know? Yeah. And he's just looking at me like, relax. Like, cause I lose my feminine side and I'm just like, like you're getting so aggressive. You're so, and I'm like, well, I'm a fighter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's there, but it, it, it's a balance. It's really a balance. And you know, when I'm home, you know, I have a dog, I'm very nurturing. I like to cook. I like to do different things. And now that I'm, I'm working, you know, I have a, a full-time job with Phil DeRue his personal assistant and, you know, to be in the GM of his gym, I feel more the nurturing. Cause I've got like a collective group of, I have two female coaches and then I have the rest are male coaches. And I kind of almost have to like mother everybody, yeah. but the females, I don't really have to worry about cause they they're, but the guys, I kind of have to, you know, cause sometimes they get like, and I have to kind of bring them together a little bit, you know, and, and it's experience. They're a lot of the young guys, but they're awesome. Like I work with such an amazing group of coaches and Phil's great. You know, I'm, I'm very, very blessed. Well, it's amazing to hear all the people that you're working with, like Avril, you're working with the UFC fighters. And you know, something I noticed that you were saying, a lot of these female boxers are also training in MMA. Yeah. And I think that that's very new. Like you've basically gotten like, 
you have seen the evolution of women's boxing over the course of like two decades. And what do you, would you say is like the, like from back then, what do you think is like the most, the biggest accomplishment that we've made as women from starting two decades ago, all the way to present time now? Well, I mean, getting televised, I mean, being right. televised consistently, like there's always, I mean, it's like most of the time when there's a male card, you're seeing females televised, you know, in, in 2006, 15, I was 15 or 16. I was the first female in over a decade to fight on pay-per-view. Oh my God. And people don't know this. Shane Mosley put me on his co-feature when he fought my orga the second time. I fought for the IBF world title against Yuli Han Luna, which ended in a draw, which I thought I won. And I wanted the rematch, but it ended in, and Yuli Han's a, a champion. Now she dropped. I think she's at 118 now and she's now a champion. Um, a very good fighter. Um, but she, so that was, we got that opportunity, you know, and, and I know that I did a ton of press for that because Shane knew that I could sell. I speak fluent Spanish. So I was on ESPN Latino. I did all these different things and it was awesome. Me and Shane together, you know, it was cool that he, you know, he brought me in as like his, you know, you're going to open up the show for me. And that hadn't happened since Layla Ali. And that was over a decade ago. So that was really cool for me to experience. And now to see women getting those opportunities even more is nice, you know, seeing it with, with the, with the zone, seeing it with uh, ESPN plus and, uh, you know, even Showtime and even HBO when Cecilia break has fought, I was at that fight when she fought on HBO and then Clarissa fought on HBO. And it's, yeah. it's exciting to see, you know, I'm, I'm happy that women are, are getting those opportunities. It's a long time coming. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree, especially because when people think of female boxers, you mentioned this earlier, when they think like, oh, only two minute rounds or this and that, like, is it because they're not as exciting or whatever they have these kind of assumptions? It's like, just because being woman, like for me personally, I like to wear a skirt when I find yeah, the amateurs. I, a skirt. I like to say that just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I can't fight. And you mentioned this before, it's not a competition between men or women. It's like, I'm a good fighter, regardless. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't, I don't want to go fight the men, but as you say, they still respect me as they respect you because they see you go in there. It doesn't matter what it is. If you're a fighter, you're a fighter. And if you're putting the heart and dedication into it, you're going to get on that, in that ring, what you're putting in, in the gym. So yeah. like, if I'm coming in there in a skirt, I've had many girls say so much crap about me just because I'm walking into the arena with a skirt. And that whole conversation just stops <laughs> once the round's over. I've always fought in a skirt. And you know why I fought in a skirt? Now I fought is the Mexican flag and, and the, and the uh, amateur. Yeah, I like, really like it. Yeah, I always fought in a skirt. But you know why? It wasn't even the feminine for me. It wasn't even that. It was that I'm a mover. So oh, I, I, mean, I, I <laughs> the shorts, like train in shorts at all. I don't like, I feel like I'm, they ride up. I feel so constricted. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, and I, I, even in the amateurs, when I fought, you know, um, if I had to fight and I, I think I fought, in, I don't know, I did in nationals. It wasn't until Million Dollar Baby that they actually let me fight in a skirt. I think that was because of the, the media attention that I had. But in the finals, the Golden Gloves, I had to fight in those stupid shorts. Oh. And they were like, I, I, they were too long and they were too, like, I didn't feel the fluidity of my legs and I've always been a mover. So after that, the pros, I've never fought in shorts in all my 33 fights. I've always had some kind of like a, a skirt, you skirt know, skirt. Style and, um, you know, and even, um, Franchon, um, Franchon made my, uh, um, my, my boxing, you know, Franchon, right? Uh, refresh my memory. Uh, she's a world champion. She was, um, she was, yes, she was, yes, she was, yes. I know the name, but like, yeah, yeah. Now I know what you're talking about. It's yeah. Missouri now she's married, but she signed with golden boy and yeah. Franchon made my, the last fight I had, she made my outfit. Cause I stand salsa. So she made me a salsa inspired outfit and I wanted, I loved it. I love, I mean, she's freaking awesome. Yeah. You know, she's one of the girls, her Christina Cruz, I used to spark Christina Cruz back in the day. Um, you know, I used to watch even Michaela Meyer. Like I've seen them all. In the amateurs and i would go support them when they would come out and they fought and it was like a, a world's duel that we had in oxnard when i was living out there and the girls came and i have pictures of me christina and franchon and franchon sang the national anthem and i'm like i just loved seeing all these opportunities and these women now like capitalizing and i respect them for it you know words like everybody's got a different journey you know my journey is self-promoted to where i am now i never signed with a promoter i had opportunities to but my manager and myself, we didn't think it was the right options, you know, and I'm not going to say every woman should do that. I'm not going to say every woman, maybe they don't feel like they need a manager, right. you know, maybe they just feel like they need a promoter. I'm like, well, not one thing's right or wrong. It's what's your, it's for you. 
Right. You know, and, and that's what I, I give women. Like I just tell any female that's going to go pro it's different. Right. Yeah. The pros are different. You even see that now that you see the women coming up in the pros. Now they're starting to develop the more pro style. It's different when you go from four rounds to six rounds, to eight rounds, to 10 rounds. Um, you know, and, and it's just, it's totally different styles of people that you're fighting, you know, nationally, internationally. So I always tell them like, you know, when you're going to make that transition, just understand that, just know that the styles are going to be a little bit different. That's going to take some time. You're not just going to come into the pros and be like, all right, bang, I got a pro style. You know, for me, I had a pro style in the amateurs, but I also only had 12 amateur bouts. Right. So it's different when the headgear comes off. It's different when those gloves go to eight ounces. It's different. I don't care who you are. You know, it's, it's, it takes some time to adjust. So just be patient. And then, you know, then you go from there. Right. And I, I, you know what, that's one thing that I always, everybody always asks me, do you want to go pro? And I'm like, no, like, I just don't, because for me, and like, of course I respect you, oh, I respect yeah. all like the females that are doing this pro box and it's absolutely amazing. I totally admire everybody, but for me, yeah. it's not my style. Like I've never been, um, I never wanted to do professional boxing I never wanted like that style doesn't like suit me I've always been an in and out very like high punch volume a lot of combinations a lot of angles that's just like the very finesse of it the pro boxing is so like you sit there and it's beautiful don't get me wrong but it's just so not like what I do you know what I mean so and for the headgear to come off for that I'm like no no, yeah no look at my headgear I respect you for that and think about it. You're doing in the amateurs. How many fights do you have now? 50. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's like, why would you go pro? You know yeah. what I mean? You find the amateurs and you're getting fights and you're yeah. loving what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, I went pro because I was like, well, what's next? There was no opportunity for me to go to the Olympics. There was no opportunity for me to get all those fights. So I learned on the job as a professional and that's why my style, and that's what I don't think people really understand when the amateurs are going to pros. I'm like, dude, it takes some time to get a pro style. You don't just, it doesn't happen overnight, you know? Right. And so, you know, that's why when people, I would see, I was very uh, opinionated about the styles of these amateurs coming in like Michaela Meyer, like Clarissa Shields and Katie Taylor. And, and yeah. I would just be like, I watch them and I'm just like, they're still not, it's not quite, I mean, yeah, they're beasts. Don't get me wrong. They're great athletes but they're just not quite there yet. They're right. getting in the right direction, but they're not quite there yet. They're missing this, this, and this. But then, you know, people make comments like, oh, you're hating. I'm like, okay. Like, no, this is cool. It's not. Like I would look at it like you have so much experience. You've been doing this for so many years that your outlook on it, like you've seen the evolution. So you I know yeah. seeing it from a different perspective. That's how I would see it. Yeah. But that's because, yeah, but that's the thing though. Like it's for me, it's more like, and that's why I've done commentating. I loved commentating and working because I'm like I'm seeing I see it and I and I love when I start seeing the women evolve like even with um Delphine Persoon when she first fought Katie Taylor yeah I mean I thought Delphine fought, she won that fight based on her experience you know the second fight though completely different you know because then Katie was more prepared and learned a lot from the first fight you know and and I think Katie Taylor is a phenomenal athlete I remember people talking about her from when she, before, I mean, I sparred Queen Underwood. I worked with her in California before she went for Katie Taylor. I think it was in Worlds. So those were great. I mean, that was really cool, you know, that I got to, I, I got to see that part of it. And those are things I didn't get to participate in. So I feel like it was like a, you know, one degree of separation where I got to kind of experience it through their eyes. Right. And I, you know, I love, I love hearing like, it's, it's amazing how a woman like yourself in the sport of box, and when you mentioned Christy Martin and all these people, right? Did you ever see like this was like the path that you were leading a woman like myself right now with all of our opportunities? Did you see that happening? You know, I just, I never really thought, I never put myself in a box and I just, I always focus on me. So I saw, I provided, I created the opportunities for myself. So I, I mean, I knew it was possible if enough women would push, you know, I remember when I fought on, um, I fought on top ranks card on Miguel Cotto's undercard. And um, yeah, I went to Bob Arum and I actually, me and my manager went to Bob Arum and I told him why he needed to give me an opportunity. I mean, I went with a full portfolio, a full thing. And he was very adamant and he was against it because he had lost a lot of money with Christy Martin and Lucia Riker fighting each other. And he said that Lucia had gotten hurt. And he was like, that was going to be like the million dollar purse or whatever. And he was marketing it off the million dollar baby, which was smart. 
But I said, well, that's nice. I'm not, I'm not Christy Martin and I'm not Lucia Riker. I said, I'm Maureen Shea and this is what I bring and this is my marketability and this is what I'm capable of doing. And he was like, he didn't even look at my, my portfolio, nothing. I had a tape of one of my fights. He was like, okay. And he put me on. You know what I mean? I fought on Evander Holyfield's undercard. I mean, I've, I've done, I, you know, like I said, Shane Mosley, like I've done a lot. And now that I see women getting those opportunities more now, I'm happy for them because I know what it took for me to fight for those spots. It was a lot harder back then. Yep. Then now to see Golden Boy. I mean, when I, I went up to Bob Aaron after he find, signed Michaela Meyer and I told him, I said, congratulations. That's great. I'm glad that you're giving a woman an opportunity and you're signing her. You know, but he gave me the opportunity to fight for him. And then I commentated for him. You know, I mean, it was it was great. And I still talk to, you know, I, whenever I go and I see top rank, I go up to them and I fought for Oscar De La Hoya as well in the Bronx. Ooh. I fought for a lot of these promoters, but I just never signed with them, you know, because it wasn't, the opportunity wasn't available then. So when I see Franchon sign with Golden Boy and Marlene and Sinisa, and I see, you know, all these other, you know, and even like, I know that um, Clarissa works with Dimitri Salida, which is funny because I was in camps with Dimitri Salida. We had the same trainer, boxing trainer. And I was in his camp in the Poconos for my pro debut. You know, I know Dimitri will real well, you know, right. Paul Alinaji. I trained with Paul. I sparred Paulie and Gleason's, you know, once or twice. And I've known them, Danny Jacobs and Peter Quillen. And, you know, like I grew up with these guys, you know, and I love seeing what they're doing now. And I have my road, like, my path and I know that they're like happy and even Chris Algieri he's in the gym now getting ready for another fight and you know Chris and Chris and I I always admired Chris for his you know him going out and trying to get the best training you know moving I did the same thing I went from the from the Bronx to Brooklyn to Jersey from Jersey to Mexico from Mexico to California California now to Florida I mean all in pursuit of of, of a better of a better opportunities for my boxing you know and, and you love and passionate boxing too yeah. And I'm not saying every woman has to do that, but that was my road. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad because it provided me such amazing opportunities and experiences. And I got to experience behind the scenes and I understand the business. Uh, I understand the marketing. I understand the, the, the networks and what they look for. And, you know, and, and now whether I, whether I ever use that experience or knowledge, I, right now I'm, I'm, I'm learning a lot, even in the MMA world, you know, Phil trains Dustin Poirier, Dustin comes into the gym. We wa I watched him get ready for Conor McGregor, you know, with, with Phil. And, um, you know, we have all these amazing people that come in, um, athletes and, and what have you that come into the, he's training Kevin James now and Kevin James is getting ready for a, a movie. And then he trains Timberland, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome to see all the I mean, strength and conditioning, but Kevin James, he does mitts. He did mitts yesterday with Kevin James, and I was kind of critiquing him a little bit. And Kevin James is a heck of an athlete for a man his size. He's a heck of an athlete. So it's it's awesome to just witness what boxing and just mixed martial arts does for a lot of regular people, everyday people. Of course, because it's like I, I was having this conversation before with somebody that. The everything that is a metaphor, for example, you see people in every sport like volleyball or basketball or even people just um, going for, I don't know, maybe a degree in school or something. People always use like language is very important to me. So when people always use yeah. the references, you have to fight for it. You have to fight for your championship. You have to fight for this or fight for that, fight for the relationship. You know, all yeah. these things, they always reference back to the core, which is what we all know innately as humans is really fighting for something that you really want. And the core of that is when you get into the octagon, the ring, the mat, the fundamentals of actually fighting. And I think that that really brings out a raw nature in a person. And it really tells them like what kind of person they are when they're in the yeah. ring with somebody going head to head or wrestling when you're literally head to head or jujitsu, when you're trying to get a submission, it's real and, and having to be calm in the well, midst of all that chaos. Yes. And I think that's the, what I told people, like, cause I had a lot of anger and emotional issues growing up as a kid. And I realized it was controlled rage is what I've learned. And I'm a big, I'm well, being an English major. I'm big on words too. And I love like just the, the other ones, which they don't use nowadays, but like rolling with the punches, you know right. what I mean? Always reference and even Rocky. I mean, he's got tons of stuff, you know, out there, the movies, you know, and it's just such a correlation between life and, and, and boxing or life and combat, you know, because that's, it's, it's a fight. I read a book before every one of my fights called uh, warrior of the light by Paolo Coelho. And it's about going to war. I like him. 
Oh, all his stuff. The alchemy. I mean, he's amazing. But if you get a chance, check out Warrior of the Light. It's manual. It's not something you read front front to back. You could just open it up for that day and read it. And it's like, he talks about one of my favorite ones I read before one of my fights. And it talks about retreat and how you, they look at retreat as a weakness. And it's not, it's actually very intelligent because when you need to step and in boxing, it's like when you're in exchange, you don't just have to keep going, going, going. It's okay to retreat, reassess, and then revalue and then reestablish, you know? Yes. And that helped me in one of my fights actually a lot. Cause I was like, oh, like it hit me what, what I read and in the exchange, I'm like, no, it's okay to retreat. It doesn't mean that you're weak or you're a coward or you're, that's ego. And ego right. can be positive and negative, you know, depending on what you're using it for. And um, I've been really big into like, uh, you know, mind, just the mental aspects of, you know, psychology of an athlete, you know, of, of even just about being a female. And I'm like, there's, I tell everyone, like, we're a little crazy. If you're okay <laughs> punching in the face and getting punched back, you yeah. there's a little off and that's okay. <laughs> but you know, I think every fighter should be in therapy. I think that because there's a lot of emotional turmoil and a lot of stuff that, that comes up in a fight. Yep. And um, I think also the emotions leading up to it and um, the fears, the uh, second guessing, the overconfident, you know, uh, a lot of different things, especially with the eating, with understanding having a relationship with food and having to make the weight and thinking of like, are you depriving? Are you, I mean, there's so many different things and really knowing yourself, you have to really know yourself. And I feel like boxing is the truth theorem. Like everything comes out in the ring, no matter what you're going through mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, it's going to come out. So you better have your shit in check. Boxing is a That's truth true. theorem. Yeah. I love that. That is so, so strong. What you just said, boxing is the truth theorem. It's true. It is. Yeah. And you know, because you do it. And I think yeah. only people really that do it and then have experienced these, I mean, you have 50 fights, like you've yeah. been through some stuff and you've had those talks with yourself. And, and it's crazy when I tell people like, do you know how many conversations I have my, with myself in a two minute round? <laughs> I'm like, and then sometimes I'll come back to the corner. I'll start talking to my coach. He's like, shut up. Listen. I'm like, okay. Because I'm still having conversations with myself. Yeah. And like, what just happened? Was that okay? Did I do, I did this. I did that. And he's like, shut up. Just, just listen for a second. Yeah, it's just, because we're analytical. We're at, we analyze. We're females. Women are yeah. very analytical. Yeah. We're, and we're very, but that's what makes us such great athletes is because we're very technical. Yes. And, and yeah. So I think, I think that's, that's awesome that, you know, you, you get it, you get exactly what I'm saying. And like boxing being the truth serum doesn't just apply to us women. It applies to everybody. It's like, I don't think there's like one person. I don't think there's a single person who has not cried in that ring. That's a competitor at some point, whether it be in a fight or in a sparring match, or even just in training, like everybody's cried. I said that to a friend of mine. I'm like, I remember when I was in California and I was like, whether I was PMSing or I, I cry when I'm frustrated and I was frustrated with something outside of the ring. And I was sparring one of my sparring partners. His name's German. I'll never forget. I'm sparring him and I'm crying. And he just like, stopped. I'm like, no, don't stop. Keep going. He's like, and then I remember my coach, Joseph Janik, he'll tell you, he was just like, he's like, I think you scared the shit out of German. I was about to say that. I don't know. You're fine. <laughs> I had, don't worry. I'm like, it wasn't you. Cause he, they care. He cared so much. You know, but I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. I'm like, I didn't cry because you hit me. I was crying because I was frustrated with something that has nothing to do with you. Yeah. And then, like, okay, are you sure? I'm like, yes. Yeah. And I think a woman are a lot more like, we're, we're, we'll let it out a lot easier than a man. Well, like a man will probably take it to the locker room, maybe hit something, but we cry, you know, and my coach right now, uh, Cindy Vanderpool, our team is Mandy Bujold, uh, okay. Caitlin Clark, who's a current Canadian champion and Mackenzie Wright, a former uh, national competitor. I think she was a former national champion herself. So we have like the uh, four of us and, you know, we've been working for Mandy's current Olympic dream together. And we said, we're like, oh my God, the amount of tears that Sid is going to have to deal with from our team. <laughs> beautiful. You guys have that. I love that you guys are doing all that to support. That's so beautiful. That's yeah. what it's about. You yeah. know, I, I mean, I don't have many, I mean, I have the girl like Angie, who's the judoka. She's like, like, you know, come on. And I'm cheering her on for her Olympic dream. And for me, it's my world championship. And then you know, and then in the gym, I have Evelyn, who's still kind of, she's still young in the sport, but she's like, whatever you need, I'm here for you. Like, I love that, yeah. you know, 
and it's it's awesome because they're inspired and you you guys coming together just help each other and that's what it's about you know if we all are on the same page bringing the same energy in that's what makes the unstoppable team if any like chain is broken in that then the whole team will feel it so i think it was very important that sid knew who he was bringing for mandy because this is for her olympics like we all need to be on the same page and it's like Yes, we're training for Mandy. Of course, this is Mandy. But at the same time, we're all benefiting because we're all coming in there with the same mindset and we're all elite in our country. Yeah. So it's and like each other up. Exactly. Listen, and we I feel like that. this is so rare to have a girl team in a team like this. And we're all Very. not that far from each other's weight class. Like I'm 54, Mandy's 51. Mackenzie, I mean, she fought at 51, but she's very light. She could easily go to 48, I think, but you know, we're all like in the same weight brackets, not that far. Yeah. 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 But that's awesome. I love hearing that. That's like, that's so cool. They should do a documentary on you guys. Are they doing something? <laughs> out there? Be good. I would watch it. Yeah. I'd like, that's awesome. Like to see like for Mandy, like to see all these women from different styles and different weight classes coming together. It is very rare. It is like, I think like, even we were talking about, I said, it's very special because especially in Canada, like, like I was telling you, you know, we don't have like a lot of competitors for females. Like, I mean, now it's growing obviously, but just in Canada, right. I think that Florida, the state of Florida itself has a bigger population than the whole country of Canada. So, you know what I mean by that? And um, just to have us together like that, we're so lucky that we live not that far from each other we're and then you know we're all at this level and then we all are willing to come together with the same mindset i said this is actually a really special thing oh, and yeah. I, <laughs> I, I thank you recognize that it's awesome that you recognize that and yeah that's so cool that makes me so happy to hear you guys have that that's but great. you know what like i'm so enjoyed this conversation with oh, you. Me i too. love like everything that you're telling me but i didn't get a chance to ask you yeah why boxing for oh, you God. <laughs> why boxing <laughs> it's okay so why do you go you know I always say like for me it was weird because like I, I started I was actually in an abusive relationship when I started boxing and I went to the gym to better myself for him and it was physically oh, abusive, verbally abusive and yeah I thought I was fat and ugly and I needed to lose weight and I went to the gym to lose the weight and then I walked into the back and there was a boxing ring and I was like uh I had seen um, when I was 15 years old, I had seen Mike Tyson bite Evander Holyfield's ear. Yep. And so I was like, yeah, I was like, that fascinated me, not because of the boxing aspect, but because of the rage that Mike Tyson felt, which I felt a lot as a kid. I had a lot of misplaced rage and unsettled emotions. And um, I think that came from my upbringing of being Mexican and Irish and being raised by a very strict um, old Irish Catholic father. And that's another thing that I really like, kind of like your dad, where my dad never treated me like a girl. He treated me like a human. So if I made a mistake, I paid for it, no matter what, whether I was a girl or a boy, like it didn't matter. I have a brother who's 10 years older than me. And it was the same thing. If I made a decision, I paid the, the price for it, you know, no matter what. It wasn't softened because I'm a girl or she can't go through that because she's a girl. It was like, no, you're a human, you know? And I think that's why when I walked into boxing, I didn't really see it diverse. I didn't see the men and the women. I just saw like, I feel a connection to this and I want to do it. And then my, uh, the boxing coach came up to me uh, and he said, do you want to try? And he's Puerto Rican and a lot of guys in there were speaking Spanish. So I said, how am I going to connect with these men? And I speak Spanish. So I answered in Spanish. And then um, after that, you know, I just, I fell in love with the sport and I was kind of like, what's next, what's next. And I think boxing really captivated me more on an emotional level before it did on a physical level. And um, it caused me a lot of turmoil too, though, but it just provided me so much value. And really, like I said, the truth serum and getting to know myself. And I always say boxing taught me what my parents couldn't. And it's very unforgiving where yeah. your parents are, they'll teach you, but they'll also, there's a degree where my parents are on, they put me in the street, you know what I mean? And keep me out there. They may throw me out for a minute, but eventually they're going to let me back in, you know, thankfully, but in boxing, <laughs> like once you're, once you get hit, you're going to keep, keep yeah. getting hit, you know? And it's like, it's almost like borderline. Like it's like, I don't know. It's, it's, um, it was just very interesting that I gravitated towards that. I didn't know I was good at it. And then I figured out, oh, well, I am Mexican and Irish and that's in my blood somewhere. Cause nobody in my family boxed. And my dad wasn't an athlete. You know, I mean, my brother was a bodybuilder and a power lifter. My uncle on my dad's side, um, played baseball and he was going to get recruited by the Mets. And then my mom was a runner and a swimmer, but not competitively just for recreational. That was so my mom. 
Oh, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah go on. It's so funny. Now I swim and I run. I mean, I box too. <laughs> but I thought when I'm out of camp, when I'm out of camp, I'm like, oh, like I'm not in camp right now because my fight's supposed to be scheduled for July. It was supposed to be June, but they moved it. I'm like, well, Phil's getting ready for a triathlon. I might as well do the bi part of it, which is the running and the swimming. So I'm doing that with him. You know, so I'm like, all right, that's cool. But um, but yeah, I, I love that. For me now, it's just such a different like the boxing, I can take a month away from boxing and it's not going to hurt me. You know, I just have to get back into boxing shape, you know, because right. I just have all that experience already where it's like, it almost becomes a detriment if I don't, you know, right. I'll, I'll burn myself out. But, um, and keeping my mind, you know, positive. But yeah, but boxing, it just, I think it was just that, I just, I love it. And it was the one thing that really fulfilled me mentally, physically, spiritually, like it helped me grow and it made me face my hardest self you know, and, and, and in the hardest way. And, you know, I, I always let, they always said you do things the hard way and yeah. And even in boxing, it wasn't always easy, but man, like to be able to have opportunities like this to provide a knowledge and experience for, for somebody like yourself or anybody out there, like it's worth it. It was worth it. So no, I, I, I guess I appreciate it so was, much. Like this, just hearing your story and everything and hearing like your whys, your hows and what's next. Like, I'm just, I'm just blown away by the kind of person you are. And I think that it's like, I'm so grateful that you would come on here and share your experiences. Yeah. And now you're just looking to have that next fight. Is that your next steps? Yeah, I, I, I have. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting right now. There's some controversy going on with the WBA and um, you know, I was ranked number one and then they had two other girls fight for the title that were, yeah. And mm -hmm. now um, I was supposed to be the mandatory, but now that got bumped. So now it's some other girl. So I let my manager handle this. I'm just like, listen, I've got, the thing with me is, is like, you know, I have other things that I do and people don't understand. Like I'm very good at focus and, and balance. And anybody who thinks like, oh, she's not focused. Or, I'm always focused. I always know exactly what I'm doing and I'm very calculated. Um, but I also don't rely on boxing to pay my bills. You know, I, right. I, I, have, I have a certain lifestyle and I like my lifestyle and I'm a very strong, independent, you know, self-funded woman. And I am, you know, doing what I have to do. It's also good for me. I'm not the kind of fighter that if I have too much time on my hands, it's no good. Even if somebody wanted to throw money at me and tell me all I had to do is box, I couldn't do it. It wouldn't be good for me, you know? Um, but I'm very fortunate that I work for my strength and conditioning coach who is on this ride with me. And he wants me to get him a belt because he doesn't have one yet. You know, I, I won belts with other coaches, my boxing coach as well, Derek Santos and, and Phil DeRue. And they want to win a belt. They were, we're all on the same page, kind of like what you talked about with your team. You know, you need that for anybody, even the gym that I run, like we're all on the same page. And I make sure that everybody, every team meeting we have, we all put our stuff out there. Any questions, every, any concerns. So there's no, there's no, there's no, you know, misunderstanding, but everybody's there collectively for the best, the betterment of the gym, the betterment, uh, everybody's there for the betterment of me, you know, even what I love about the team is that like, I told my coaches, listen, once we start camp, cause I'm in, I work in the gym that I'm training in and I'm like, take my phone. I don't care if I tell you, I need it, take it from me. And I was training the other day. It was like a couple weeks ago. And one of the coaches, I was like, where's my phone? He goes in my pocket, go do your rep. And I was like, I'm so grateful for you. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm tough. I think cause I'm their boss when right. But now it's like, no, you're my boss. And he's like, right. I'm your boss now. I'm like, okay. And it's good that we have that respect, but it's yeah. true. You know, and I'm just so lucky to have that amazing group of people around me that really want this for me. They really want this because it's the end of my career. I know that, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I choose it to be, I could fight till I'm 50. I don't really want to, you right. know, I want, I have get, get in, achieve my goals. I work hard for it. I'm still, I've been, I mean, think about how long I've been doing this and I'm still relevant. Of course, of course you are. Oh my God, look at everything that you've been doing. You're yeah. a veteran, as you said. You know, and I'm still, I just, I just, I, I now partnered with, um, with One With Life Tequila and I'm working with uh, Tia Fimo Lopez, Larry Holmes, Boom Boom Mancini, Lisa Elovich, who I fought for. Lisa gave me the opportunity, she's a boxing promoter who gave me the opportunity for my first title, my NABF title. It's like, look at how full circle things happen. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I'd be like, well, nobody's questioning why is Maureen Shea involved with the tequila company? It's like, well, if you know my story, yep. you, know, you know why, you know? And it, it's awesome to be partnered with somebody like Tia Fimo, who look what Tio's doing. You know, what he's doing at such a young age. And, and, and he beat one of my pound for pound favorite, favorite fighters, Lomachenko, who, you know, who I trained with. And I was like, man, that was, that was a great fight, you know? I love Lomachenko. Oh, he's great. He was, man, he lapped me. I got to tell you a story. I was running at Royal Verde. 
in California and I was running with a team and there was like, like he, he was the lead. Obviously I took my time cause I'm really good at my pacing, but they were Hills. So I remember he, he went and he came around and he was about to lap me. He lapped me. And at that moment, I was like tired. I was like, man, I was having those, those thoughts in my head of like, oh, oh, and all of a sudden he lapped me and I was like, screw this. And I just freaking took off. You know, I was like, trying to, like <laughs> that's, that's my inner fight that comes out. Like, oh, like oh, totally I'm though. like, dude, I'm running with my pound for pound favorite fighter. And I'm a female. How many females ever got to do how many? And I'm like, you better run. Yeah, you, you better, better, you better, pick up. You better you go. Just- <laughs> And he respected me. And, and that's the thing I think with the fighters, with all of them, it's like, they don't have to like that I box, but they, they can't deny the respect that they have for my, my work ethic. That's the and one I think that's very now, like a uh, very much more accepted too. I think that it's very taboo for somebody to say something to a woman in, in sports, like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. I think that now that people are becoming more aware and now that people are respecting it more that like, yeah. for example, a guy can't just come up to me and be like, oh, like, why do you box? Cause I feel like my friend beside me is like, well, why can't she? Yeah. Like now it's become yeah. that like but, she can do whatever she wants. What was interesting with that camp was that they were all from Kazakhstan, Ukraine, like yeah. Warren. And it's very different cultures. Some Muslims, some were Christian, very different. And when I first showed up at the, I'll never forget at the park, I remember they all kind of looked at me like a foreign farm animal. And, <laughs> and our time, Cecilia Flores was like, hey, this is Maureen Shea. She's a two-time world champion. They didn't care. They're right. like, she's a girl. They still, you know what I mean? Right. And so I was like, okay, well, and it was the same way that like whenever, when I went to the new gym in California, I remember I'm like, listen, they may be faster than me. They may be stronger than me. They may be younger than me, but they can't outwork me. And as long as I kept that mentality and I, ca- I never quit, um, you know, we would do trips to Vegas. If we all went to the Vegas to watch the fights, you sure as heck know. If I knew I had to run the next day, I was there at the park and I was older than them. And one of the guys, um, he actually won the Olympic gold after Lomachenko, Foz, and he was signed with top rank. And he came up to me and he was like, Maureen, you, you fight like man. And I'm like, and then my coach was like, he's like, no, 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 you're a woman, you're a woman. But when you in the ring, you're like a man. And I'm, <laughs> I, I get what they mean, but I'm like, I'm, I'm me. I'm an athlete. I'm not, yeah. it's not, you know, there's no, like, it's not female boxer. It's like, well, no crap. She's a female. Why do we got to put a female in front of the freaking name? Right. I'm so exactly. the, the WBC changed the belt. I have the old woman's belt, which was like a flower. Why can't we all have the same? <laughs> it has a flower on it. Like the, yeah. I'm like, why can't we all have the same freaking belt? And then they gave me a, I mean, the WBA did for the NABA title was nice, but I don't like pink. I like green. That's my favorite color. I like, like green. <laughs> never my color. And it's specifically because I just didn't feel like I needed to be associated with something just because I'm a girl. I have to like pink. Just because you're a guy, you can't like pink. Right. Exactly. Like, or like because you're a guy, you have to like blue or something. Yeah. And that's all over now. But I still think that there's definitely fine lines like we talked about when it comes yeah. to gender and sport. That's different. And like what you said too, different cultures, right? Like I'm sure there's a lot of countries that are still way behind on their women movements. There's lots of countries that still restrict women from even competing in the sport like that. So like definitely like, yeah, totally slipped my mind to even mention that it's true. Different cultures and like how you said, like, you know, they kind of looked at you for a second because when you think it causes sense, I'm like, is that even really popular? And if it is, how long ago did it become popular there for women? Yep. So that's a really good point. But you know what? Like I said, like I've enjoyed this conversation. Um, so much with you Maureen is there anything that you would like to leave off on a final note for the audience no I guess I mean no I I just think like support women like you that are still you know I love supporting women like you and I definitely will and I want to know what you're doing what you're up to because it's so it it just makes me happy to know that like everything that women like myself have gone through and push for and fight for that the women like you have these opportunities I'm so excited for you and please tell Mandy I said hello and I'm I'm so excited for your whole team and what you guys have going on it's very very exciting so it's more for you but you know if anybody wants to follow me I'm on Instagram Maureen underscore Shay you can message me I I get back to everybody you know as much as much as I can and uh, Facebook and Twitter and all that all that good stuff Thank you so much, Maureen. And thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope everybody took in everything that Maureen and I were talking about. Really amazing quality, amazing knowledge and history. I just, I absolutely love this conversation. So thank you everybody for tuning in and we will see you next week on the next episode of The Female Fist. Thank you, Maureen. No problem, take care.